Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Webby Ketchup, and welcome to episode 21 of my Minecraft 1.20 Let's Play series. So as I previously mentioned, I have kind of been talking about this villager breeder quite a lot. And as you can see, it is very much overflowing with villagers because I don't think I've used the villager breeder since I built my library over there. But I have a plan to change that because just behind my villager breeder is this huge open cherry grove that I have really not built anything in besides um, when I was testing out what type of path I wanted. But we have so much free real estate over here and I want to put it to use. So I want to build a bustling big village in this area because sometimes it can feel a bit lonely being the only one here. So I'm hoping that I can maybe enclose this this area so that I can have villagers roaming around and they will be safe. But we'll have to see about that because I actually have to build a village first. I've created a checklist for everything that I'm going to need in order to complete this village. The first thing I'm going to need to do is gather materials and then I'm going to have to do some terraforming by clearing out the trees and flattening up the area a little bit. And then I actually have to build the village and then add in all of the villagers. So let's get started with some of that right now. There is, however, quite a bit of materials that I need to gather. The main one being birch wood, because as you can see, I don't have a lot. But luckily, near the woodland mansion near my house, there is a bunch of birch trees. So I'm going to head over there and grab a couple of birch wood. But I'll keep the clip short and sweet. Okay, so I've finished gathering up, I think, pretty much all of the materials I'm going to need for this. So material gathering is done. I've also pretty much cleared out all of the trees in this area. So now the only thing that I have to do in terms of terraforming is to actually terraform and flatten this out a little bit because... I am just not vibing with this little valley type thing going on here, so we're gonna flatten it out. And luckily, I brought a whole bunch of grass to help me with this. So now the only thing left to do is to get started. Oh my god, you guys. I was just finishing up doing some terraforming and look at what I found. This was from my very first episode when I went and mined some cobblestone because I was talking about how much I hate using um, wooden tools. Oh wait, this is so cool. This also kind of gives me an idea. I think I want to incorporate some like hobbit hole villager houses because that's not really something that I've ever done before. And because we have this whole like cliffside thing almost, I think it would be a really good way to incorporate the cliffside instead of just covering it up with a retaining wall. So that actually might be what I decide to do instead. And now I'm like super, super excited about it. Okay, so I finished cleaning up a good chunk of this area. I've kind of flattened it out. I didn't want it to be all just one uh, level. So I kind of have this incline going up here that I kept and then it's pretty flat down here. But then you'll notice it gets really, really hilly up here and I feel like I'm losing a lot of space because of all of these hills. So I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. I'm thinking about adding in a retaining wall, but once again, I, I don't know. Those take quite a lot of materials and time, so I'm really unsure. And then there's also this area here, which is also 
pretty flattened out. I flattened it out a bit and I don't know, just with this crazy type of very hilly terrain, I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. I have no idea how big I'm planning on making this village, um, so I guess we'll have to see, but yeah, that's what I'm considering if I need more space. I might just make this into a retaining wall and just build the village on this lower level here and then save this space up here for possibly something else. But speaking of making sure I have enough space, I have gotten a quite a bit of cobblestone here so that I can try and mark out where I want all of my different buildings to go. I've planned out, I think like, about nine different houses that I want to add into this area and I want to kind of group them into like little pods almost. Yeah, I really don't have too much of a plan for the layout but I do know what I want the houses to look like. So I think I'm just gonna start with this cobblestone and start placing it around and figuring out some sort of layout for this place. Well, isn't this fitting? Look at this. What do we have here? A little pillager patrol. See you later, guys. Oh, I just realized I have a villager breeder right there. Oh, God. Okay. Um, this is a bit dangerous. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Luckily, I have a bucket. I just need to go and find a cow. Anyways, let's get to planning out this village. So here is the finished village all planned out. I have marked out a place for a fountain that I want to put in the middle as kind of like a centerpiece for the entire area. But looking at it from up here, I can just see the vision so much and I am so excited to get started on building up all of these houses. As you can see, I've used signs with numbers on them. That tells me which house is planning on going here just because I did have nine houses planned out in a creative world. And as I was doing this, I realized, oh gosh, I don't remember which house I wanted to put here. Um, yeah, so I marked them with numbers. I also have this path block going throughout the entire village, which is actually going to be a little river. Because I've kind of divided up my village into different sections, I wanted something to separate them. And as I've talked about before, I want to start incorporating more water into these builds. So I think having a river would be a really good way to mark out everything and separate all of the different sections. So now I guess the only thing that's left to do is to start building up all of the houses.
Oh. My. Goodness. After so many hours of building these houses, it is finally done and look at how cool this looks. Like, it already just looks so alive and literally all I have in here is the houses. Oh my goodness, I- this is probably my favorite part of this world and it's not even done. Oh my goodness. Okay, so little tour here. I wanted to section everything by like roof style and roof color to really show that there's like different sections in this um, village. And so we have three roof colors. We have this one here, which is amethyst and purple with cherry wood. And we just got three little houses here. And I, oh, I love it. Everything about this. Oh my goodness. And then over here, we have just like the extreme pink one where there's just all pink in the roofs and yeah this is one of the sections as well i also kind of like the fact that they're all really close together because one thing that i've never done when i've built a village is one build it this big but two i've always built the houses so spread out and i always felt like it was missing something and i think that thing that was missing all this time was just the crampedness of it and so i really like that i put them a little closer together but yeah here is the last color palette and we've got the more purpley side but obviously still hints of pink and i decided to make this center one this section because i only have one of these sections in here with this color palette and it does have the most houses so i thought it was a good compromise but yeah i i love every single one of these and then we have the other amethyst section over here and then the other pink section over here. But yeah, I think the next step is going to be to get in this fountain here. I do want to move it over slightly to the left just so that it's a little more centered between the houses. And then also I think the center path is going to be like right here. And so I'd like it to line up perfectly with this fountain. So even though you just watched a whole bunch of time lapses, I'm going to give you one more with this fountain. And honestly, it's probably not going to be the last one, but I hope you enjoy. Okay, and here is the finished fountain. I did get some inspiration for sure of a fountain I saw on Pinterest. I will put a picture of it on the screen. Hopefully I can find it. Um, but yeah, I just, I really liked the look. I wanted like a big fountain. I wanted something with layers in it. And I, I found this one and I was like, this is actually perfect. So I felt like it had to be included in this world. So yeah, I think that it fits in absolutely amazing. And I love it. So now with that done and all of like the main structures of this village done, I think I want to turn my attention to this waterfall. So really all I'm going to do is just like carve out wherever this path leads me and then I will fill it in with water. We'll decorate it. We'll get some bridges in here. Like I think having a bridge like right here would be perfect. And there's also a couple other locations that I feel like a bridge would work really well in to connect all of the different sections together while still keeping them separated. And then I've been thinking and I really did like the idea of the hobbit holes. However, I have, I believe, 20 houses here and that's a lot of houses which means a lot of villagers and I really don't think I need hobbit holes. However, I do still want to transform this mountain and I did once again get inspiration from Pinterest, honestly, in my spare time. I just like scroll on Pinterest and find things to inspire me and it was like this layered type of retaining wall with flowers on it and I'm sure if you guys are frequent Pinterest and the Minecraft section you will know exactly what I'm talking about but I will also put a picture here and yeah I think that that would look super super cool to have in my world with a staircase coming down like right in the middle here so yeah that is the new plan but now I think it's time to get started on our river
Okay, so now that the river is pretty much done, I wanted to keep it fairly simple. But yeah, now that it's all done, I want to start getting in some bridges. So for example, I want to put one like right here and then probably another one somewhere like right here and then probably one right here. So yeah, I'm going to start over by this one just because it's like the biggest plot I feel like so I feel like it's a good starting point and yeah we are just gonna get started so let's once again jump into even more time lapses Alright, I've gotten all three bridges in, so here is the first one, here is the second one, and right over here is the third one. So now with the bridges all done, it kind of gives me an idea of where all of the paths need to go, and so my next step is going to be making all the paths and I'm going to start just section by section and connecting all of these up together and connecting them to the bridges and then we'll worry about some of the other paths like I want to have one coming out here and then connecting to the fountain. I am going to have a path going all the way around the fountain and then it's going to branch out like here here and just on all four sides it's going to branch out so that is the plan for that but i first want to start just by connecting all of the houses in each section together so that's what i have this block palette here for it's definitely a different block palette than what i've used in the past but i think it'll look really really cool just having like a mix of stones and having some mossy in there I think will look really cool and I also want to have just like bits of grass and moss like throughout the path so it's kind of like a disheveled old stone path. I don't know why I want to do this path. It There's no like lore to it um, because this does look like a fairly you know new and uh, bustling village so technically it wouldn't make sense to have like an old rundown path but you know what I think it'll look cool and I've never done something like that before and I don't know I want to do it so I'm gonna do it so like usual for this episode we are gonna go into once again another time lapse so let's roll the clip All right, and the rest of the pathing and a little bit of decoration on the sides is all complete. And you guys, I think that this looks so, so, so good. And overall, I am just super happy with this. I want to use this little open space as like kind of a market stall area because it's just so big and open and I don't know what to do with it and I think having little market stalls would be a really good touch. But first, I want to turn my attention to this hill and I have collected a whole bunch of andesite for this. In the picture that I saw, it was, I believe, made of andesite is either andesite or stone but i'm going with andesite because i've been kind of using it a lot more lately i didn't end up using it in the paths but i have for a while been using it as rocks and i think that was really what made me 
want to start doing more with andesite and I think using it as this like, oh god, oh, it's storming. Nope, not doing that. Anyways, like I was saying, I want to use andesite for this kind of retaining wall garden planter thing. It's, it's hard to describe, but I have a plan for it, and that's why I've held off on finishing the path going up, because I want to get in the wall first and then worry about everything else. So if you couldn't have guessed already, we are jumping into another time lapse, so let's get rolling. Okay, you guys, this looks absolutely stunning. I am so glad that I decided to add this to my world. I am in love with it. Now, the only thing that's left when it comes to terraforming is obviously the staircase, but I want to hold off on the staircase because I need to start working on getting these villagers in here, and I plan on using a rail system, and rail systems don't work on stairs, so I'm just gonna leave that for now and get all the rails in, and then we're gonna start my least favorite process in all of Minecraft, and that is, um moving villagers. So I am going to go to my storage room, grab a couple of rails, and then set up the line. And honestly, let's just hope that this goes as smooth as possible. So I'm realizing I may have gone a bit overboard with the amount of houses I built because I really don't think I'm going to need that many villagers. Um, I made a bunch of job blocks for them. But in all honesty, I don't even think I'm going to be able to fill up all of the houses and I am out of minecarts. Oh, okay. That, that's great. Let me just try and find them. Okay, so I was not able to find any minecarts, um, so I had to make a couple new ones. I don't know where they are. If anyone does know, please let me know because I don't. Um, so we're just going to throw those in there and then click the button and send this guy going. I'm really hoping that this process is a lot easier than using the whole boat method that I typically used to use because that method just is not very convenient for me. And oh, okay, he went right in. Oh, I forgot to, oh no. Oh, I forgot to finish it. Okay, that's fine, it's fine. Let's just, uh, let's just finish it really quick. It's okay, we're fine. Let's just like get him on the rail and send him in. There we go, awesome. Now, my plan for this entire section is to make them Fletchers, and I just, oh my god, I just realized that I don't have any trap doors. Super fun. It's fine. I have a lot of wood in here somewhere, so let's just, oh, I thought I, I don't know where all my wood went. Where? Okay. You know what? This is not really, this is not really working out for me that well. It's fine. I, I don't remember where I put my other shulker box either. Oh, wait. It's right here, and I found the wood. And where's my crafting table? Did I lose that too? Is that in here? Am I... Am I losing my mind? Oh, it is right here. Jeez, okay. I haven't even started working with the villagers yet, and... I'm already losing it. That's super cool. Let's just make as many trapdoors as I can. If that's enough, great. If it's not, yikes. And if it's too much... Honestly, I don't think I could ever have too many trapdoors. So, yeah, let's just stick that on there. 
then break this. Hopefully I don't whack him and we're good, okay? You are now a Fletcher. How do you feel, sir? I think that means good. And I need to put a roof on that so that he stops jumping. But let's go and get our other villagers. Honestly, I hope nothing eventful happens so I can just make like a cute little compilation of me getting villagers in and getting their trades ready because that would just be so much more fun than, you know, me being upset at villagers because no one likes to be upset at villagers, let's be real. Okay, so my villager breeder actually ran out of villagers, so while I'm waiting for them to breed up a little more, I kind of want to get started on the market stall area. And I'm thinking of putting it right here, but there's another space as well that's a bit smaller, but right here I think would also be a good place for it as well to have like two market stalls. So that is what I'm going to get started on now. So I just have to clear out an area and then start placing in the path again. And then we will get to building the actual stalls. Okay, so we have finished the market stall area. I haven't really decorated it too much because I'm gonna eventually add villagers in here and I don't know if they're actually gonna trade stuff or if they're just gonna be regular villagers, I'm unsure, but we will figure that out when we get there. And then here is the other little market section and I think that they just add just a little bit more to this place because I have just like, this open space and now that it's filled i think it looks really really cool but i have been letting my villagers breed up a little bit more so i am going to continue on with that oh my goodness this whole villager moving situation took me so much longer than I originally anticipated and not because the villagers weren't cooperative. This is actually the easiest time that I've ever had dealing with villagers and moving them. The thing is is that they I didn't have enough. I thought that I would have too much and like I don't know but I had to wait so long for these villagers to breed. I had to like feed them so many carrots. I ended up even feeding them some bread too just to like really get the population going again but Oh my gosh, yeah, anyways, I did finally add a door because um, why not? I don't think I'm gonna be using this villager breeder and having a rail coming out of it, uh, at least not for a bit. You know, maybe I'll add in more villagers like wandering around the town, but for now I'm just, I, I wanna get this video done. I could have had this video done days ago if it weren't for the whole villager breeder situation, but it's fine. Anyways, um, while I was waiting for the villagers to breed up, I did add in this path here because I wanted like a central path leading up to the village. So I connected it right here. I made it two wide going up this way, and then it eventually breaks into three wide over here and down into here. I still have to do the staircase, which is what I'm gonna do next, but I want to just kind of show off a little bit here. I kind of just want to give you just a little bit of a tour of where I decided to put all of the villagers. So this entire section is here is strictly just Fletchers because Fletchers honestly to me are 
very very useful because of the stick trades i think that is such an easy way to get emeralds and yeah so this entire section is fletcher's here and there is also a house over there that is also fletcher's because i had extra fletching tables and i was like well i might as well put them to use so i did um, and then you come up here. I also, while I was waiting, added in like this retaining wall here. I added in a custom tree, a little bit of a, another pond here. I planted some other trees around. I had a lot of time in between waiting for this. Um, yeah. So I guess I'll just go down the line and show you all of the village houses. So starting in this section over here, I believe in this house we have, who do we have? Oh. Oh, it looks like I forgot a house. Okay, we're, we're just going to pretend that I, I didn't forget a house and come over. Did I forget this whole entire section? Hello? Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I forgot an entire section of my village. Okay. Um. Oh god. Okay, we're gonna pretend that I didn't for a second and I'll, I'll put those in once the video's done and finished it's fine um, anyway so if we go over here we have what are these these are my tool smiths I didn't really feel like I needed a lot of tool smiths so I only have I think these three here um, and then we have this house here which is my masons um, yeah I felt like those were a little bit more important because I do think that they can trade me for quartz so that's pretty important because I'm getting really tired of going into the nether. And then in here we have the armors. Once again, I mean, I have full armor and I don't really need armor that much. So they're just kind of fillers. And then I have more masons because once again, I feel like they're kind of important. And I made a lot of stone cutters. So I felt, you know, might as well use them. And then in here we have our weaponsmith. And oh, I think we have one more toolsmith here. Yeah, I had an extra smithing table so so this is kind of like my weapons and mason just like I, I don't know how to describe it but I kind of section them off based on like what they were um, yeah so that's that section and then moving on to this section I believe this is like the animal based section so we've got our what are these called with the looms the shepherds we got the shepherds and then in this house we have the butchers and I also believe that there are butchers in here yep okay so more butchers there and then in here we have a couple fishermen and then across the bridge over here I can't remember who's in here what is this okay we got more fishermen over here and then up here i believe this is our cartographers which trade paper which is nice because i have a sugarcane farm and then yep here is the other fletching room and then last but not least we have a leather worker which i actually this one was a baby when i had him in here so i probably should put in his job block quick yep okay there it is. Let's just fix this quick before we go. There we go. All right, now all the villagers officially have jobs. So yeah, that is basically all of the villagers I've had. I decided against going with farmers and librarians since I already have farmers all the way over there and I have librarians there. I felt like I didn't really need them, but who knows, maybe because I have an entire empty section, I might just like make them all farmers. I have no idea. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but it is time to start on the staircase. I have just so many shulker boxes full of absolute nonsense, so let's see if I can find the one that has the stone in it. Here it is. Okay, so I'm going to probably need all of this here and that, and then where there is my stone cutter, that's good. And my plan for this is to have it go from cherry and then right about like here start to kind of migrate into the stone path because I want it to be majority of the cherry wood going down because I think having a pink staircase would stick out a lot more than having like a mixed up uh, stone staircase next to all of this stone material. So that's the plan for that. I might even carry down this cherry to like literally like right here and then migrate into the stone path, but we'll see. We're just gonna start off with the blocks and then add in the stairs later so I know exactly like how many stairs I'm gonna need. So let's get out the handy dandy shovel and we're gonna jump into one final time lapse of this episode.
All right, and here is the finished staircase. I honestly, this just ties it all together. I definitely think that having the cherry stairs instead of all the stone stairs adds just like a little bit of a pop that I feel like having stone wouldn't have. So I'm really, really happy with my decision, which means that this village is completely done. Besides, of course, little details like the stalls, but other than that, like it's finished. Oh my God. Honestly, thank goodness, because this project has taken me so long. This is definitely the most time I've ever spent on a project in this world. So it just feels so good to have it all done. Now, I did get a comment, I think on my last video, of someone asking if they could get a tour of my world without shaders. And honestly, I think that would be such a fun idea because I have not had shaders off in such a long time. So this will be an experience for everyone involved. So let's turn them off. <laughs> oh my gosh. This looks so crazy. I'm so not used to vanilla textures and the water. Honestly, I've forgotten that the water is so blue in the Cherry Grove. Honestly, I kind of miss it. That's one thing about the shaders that I do like less than the vanilla textures is all the water looks the same color. And I really, really, really do like this light blue color. And honestly, I've kind of missed it, but this looks so cool. Cool. I'm so glad that my world looks good with both shaders on and off because I feel like that's a good way to tell if you have a good build or not is if it looks good without shaders. So yeah, here is the village without shaders and I think it would also be fun to go walk around the rest of my world without shaders just to kind of get a glimpse of what everything has been looking like because I've done a lot since I started playing with shaders. So I think it'll be really cool to see it without like all of the roof textures. That's really cool. So yeah, so this is kind of what the world is looking like. And yeah, there's still so much that I want to add to this world. It just, once again, over here, I said in my last episode that I want to fill up the space more because this is sitting so empty and, you know, I built behind it, but I didn't build next to it. So I don't know, maybe we'll add something in there next episode, but I, I'm unsure right now. But let's do a little flyover of my world just to just to see it because we've been flying a lot with shaders. Let's fly without. So here is the farm. I also, while I was waiting for all the villagers to breed, literally replanted all of my farms because I had that much time. But yeah, here it is. Let's go take a look at the village. Adorable. Wow. Honestly, I'm I'm just so happy with everything that I have accomplished today or not even today over like the past two weeks <laughs> this video has taken me. So yeah, let's turn the shaders on and do one more flyover before we end the episode. Shaders are back on and here is another flyover with them enabled. And yeah, I, I love the shaders so much. I definitely like it more than regular texture, but you know what? Sometimes it's fun to go back and see what it looks like without all of the glitz and glam of shaders but unfortunately that is going to be it for today so thank you guys so so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for next episode where we are going to be preparing to trade with all of these villagers by building a couple of new things that will allow us to give those trades because i want emeralds so i hope to see you there and i will catch up with you guys later bye